Welcome everybody to the fourth and final installment in our series, Keep the Change, where every single week we've been making this statement that making change is easy. Come on, it's easy to set it, it's easy to think it, it's easy to declare it. Making change is easy, but keeping it, that's where it gets tricky. It's one thing to set the goal. It's one thing to decide the course. It's a whole other thing to follow the course. And that's why every week we've been leaning into the truth of God's word, trying to make sure that in our lives personally, spiritually, that change is not just something out there, but that we keep it. And some of you have been joining with us every single week. You've been watching online, catching it on Facebook, joining us on YouTube, wherever you're joining in from. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am so glad you're here. If this is your first time or maybe you have forgotten previous parts, let me give you a quick recap of where we have been. We laid the foundation in part one and some of you need part one again already because we laid the foundation by saying if you are going to keep the change, you have to win in your mind. Come on, the battle is not out there somewhere. The battle is in your mind. And if you are going to win this fight, if you are going to keep this change, you got to win the battle in your mind. So that's foundational. Some of you, your mind already needs to be renewed. Baby, go watch it again and renew your mind. And then the next two installments were really trying to push us along in this journey. In the second installment, we said we got to celebrate more. Some of us are so focused on the aim, so focused on the goal, so focused on where we're trying to get that we never turn around to see how far we've come. And we need to celebrate more because that gives us the fuel that we need to keep the change. And then in part three last week, come on, those of you who are watching it with us, you know that we discovered how to break our bad. Because there is sin, there is bad in our lives that needs broken. And so we discovered in God's word, we experienced how to break back. But in this final installment, I got to give you a tool. Come on, I can't just give you motivation or encouragement along the journey. I got I to gotta give you a tool to use. And so it's this. If you're going to keep the change, you have got to begin deciding in advance. Come on, somebody in the chat right now, in the comments section, would you just type decide in advance? Come on, decide in advance, which for some of you scares you because most of us like to wait to the last possible second to decide anything. Why do we do this? <laughs> Why do we operate like this? But you know it's true. You, 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 you wait and you, you say, well, I'm, I'm going to just see how I feel. And then I'm going to decide whether or not I do that, whether or not I'm going to go exercise, whether, whether or not I'm going to go holler at them, whether or not I'm going to finish that on time. I'm just going to decide a little later. I'm going to just check how I feel. Come on, we do it even just going to like parties. Y'all remember when we used to go to parties? <laughs> we do it even we go, but we, we would wait till the last minute because we'd say stuff like this. We'd say, well, I'm, I'm going to just see who's going to be there, Right? So rather than decide to show up, rather than to make your plans, set your schedule, you say, wait a second, I'm going to wait until I figure out who's going to be there. And once I figure out who's going to be there, then I'll decide whether or not I'm going to show up. Why do we do this? Why do we do this? We like to wait to the last possible second. Come on, with our exercise. Come on, some of us start thinking about exercise and moving around. We wait to the last second. Rather than set our clothes out, decide the time, set the course, we wait and get up in the morning and we'd be like, eh, you know, it's kind of cloudy this morning. I think rain's coming. My knee's hurting. I think rain's coming. You know how some of y'all be doing that? Like, and we wait to the last possible second. Building relationships, we just wait. I think the worst, most dangerous place that so many of us do this is when it comes to spiritual things. Come on, spiritual habits, spiritual disciplines. We wait until, the, until the, the time right before the service to decide whether or not we're going to go to service. What you feel like? You want to you wanna, you wanna go service today? You want to go in person? You want to go online? Ah, you know, it's probably a little too late to even try to tune in online. Now, that's the way some of us 
process it. You gonna serve other people? Man, you know, I was thinking about it, but shoo, you know, I heard about some things. They sound early in the morning to serve people. Why we gotta serve people early in the morning? I just, I'll wait and see, you know, I'd be busy on Saturdays a lot of times. So I don't know if I'm going to serve people on Sunday, you know. I mean, I know they probably, I could help. I could, I could get involved, but I'm going to just wait. You know, read my Bible, shoe. I mean, if I get time, I mean, if I get time, I'll wait and see. If I get a little bored, can't find nothing on Netflix, you know, then I'll read the Bible. Worship God by giving financially. I mean, let me just wait and see. Let me just... Let me just see how this month goes, and if maybe at the end of the month we got a little, little something left over, maybe, maybe, I, maybe I give God a little something. That's how we process all of this. We love to wait on making decisions about everything. But why are we like this? Come on, whether it's practically, whether it's spiritually, because most of the time, here's what's true. Here's what I believe is true about you. We want to do what's right. Don't you? Come on, you want to do the right thing. You want to do the helpful thing. Even spiritually, you want to do the God-honoring thing. But we wait, and sometimes when waiting, we don't. And then what happens is we start to blame ourselves. Start talking about, I, I guess I just don't have the desire that I need to follow God like that. Or to, or to see that practically come to be. I guess I'm not committed enough. You know, if I was more committed, then maybe, then maybe it would happen. But maybe I've just got to work on my commitment. That's what it is. I need to be more disciplined. If I was more disciplined, then this would all work out. Or sometimes we start to look outside of ourselves, start talking about, you know, the circumstances just be hard for me. If you grew up where I grew up, grew up how I grew up, come on. You know, I got, I got some difficult circumstances. So we start to blame on other things and outside things. Some of us even start blaming things on God. You know, the reason I, I don't do I guess God just doesn't want that for me. God doesn't want me to have that in my life. God doesn't want that change to be true for me. We blame it on all these other things. When can I tell you what the source of it is? Can I tell you what I came to talk to you about today? In reality, it's really all about our inability to trust. The reason you don't decide in advance with anything that you don't or won't decide in advance is not about outside circumstances. Come on, it's not about something God did. It's not about your discipline, your commitment, your desire. At the end of the day, it's about your inability to trust. See, I'm going to say something, and I would love for you to write it down in your notes. In fact, today would be a great day to take notes. I know I say that a lot, but it'd be a really great day to take notes. Because some of you, this is going to need to sit in deep. Some of you are going to need to reread this over and over. You're going to need to watch this again with the notes already filled in to let this hit you. And I'm going to say something to you that to some of you, it may not even make sense as soon as I say it. That's okay. Give me a few minutes, and we're going to track together, and then it's going to make perfect sense. But write this down in them notes if you're taking notes today. If you don't trust something enough to decide, you've decided something not to trust. Let me say it again because I'm playing with words and I don't want you to miss it with my playing with words. If you don't trust something enough to decide, you've decided something not to trust. Trust as a concept. Trust as an idea, trust as something you or I might bring to the table is needed because there is this space of not knowing in advance. And that space is where trust is needed. If I don't know how this is going to turn out, I, I need trust to be able to do enough to be able to see how it's going to turn out. Trust is what fills that space. If I know already, come on, if I know what's going to happen, if I know how it's going to go, I don't have to trust. But if I don't know, then I'm going to have to trust because trust is what goes in that space of not knowing. 
That's what deciding in advance is. Deciding in advance really is the flexing of this thing that is trust. Because before it happens, before you get there, somebody type before in the chat. Come on, I'll cap. Before the moment comes, you decide. And that takes trust. Because most of us want to wait till the moment comes and then decide. Most of us want to make, wait until the opportunity, until that day, until that time. Trust isn't needed then. It takes trust to decide before. But I came to help you today. Come on, if we said in part one that foundationally you got to win in your mind. And then in part two and part three, we're trying to encourage you along with, with, with encouragement and motivation. Can I tell you today, I have come to give you something. I have come to give you the strongest weapon. If you're going to keep the change, if you're going to fight this fight, you need a weapon. And I've got a weapon for you today. If you're going to keep the change, the strongest weapon you have is to make the right decision in advance. To make the right decision. In advance. Why? <laughs> because if you wait until the moment when the decision is required, can I tell you what happens? You make the wrong decision. Because when you decide in advance, you decide based on trust. When you decide in advance, you decide based on principle. When you decide in advance, you decide based on conviction. When you decide in advance, you often decide based on what God's word says. But when you wait for the moment, a lot of times we decide based on our emotions. That's why you ate what you said you would never going to eat on this diet, but you ate it because you didn't decide in advance what you would or what you would not eat. That's the reason you spent what you said you wouldn't spend because you waited until all of a sudden they hit you with a sale and now you get 4% off. You're like, 4% off? I better buy now. Because you didn't decide in advance. You didn't decide in advance. The strongest weapon you have to keep the change is to decide in advance. But fundamentally, deciding in advance takes trust. So you want to keep the change? Come on, is that what you really want? I want it for you. Is that what you want? Well, if you want to keep the change, it is time to trust. But understand this reality about trust. Trust is not communicating, it's demonstrating. So many of us think that I can say what I trust, that I can tell somebody, this is how I trust, this is what I'm trusting. I trust you. Trust is demonstrating. Some of you know, you've had people tell you that they were trustworthy. But their demonstration to you proved to you that they weren't trustworthy. What do you believe? What they said or what they did? Exactly. Because trust is not communicated. It's demonstrated. And today, I want us to spend a few moments wrapping our minds around this reality of deciding in advance. This reality of trust. As it's communicated through the prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 17. I love this illustration that he gives speaking the word of God to people. I don't just mean the scripture. I mean literally the spoken word of God. Listen to what Jeremiah says. Drink this in and then we're going to spend a few moments bringing this to life in our life so that we have the weapon to keep the change. Chapter 17 verse 5, this is what the scripture says by the prophet Jeremiah. He says, this is what the Lord says. Bad things will happen to those who put their trust in people. Can I get an amen from anybody? Come on, bad things will happen to those who put their trust in people. He says this, he says, bad things will happen to those who depend on human strength. Come on, how about another amen, all right? Bad things will happen to those who put their trust in human strength. That is because, he explains why, they have stopped trusting the Lord. They are like a bush in a desert where no one lives. 
It is in a hot and dry land. It is in bad soil. That bush does not know about the good things God can give. But those who trust in the Lord will be blessed. They know that the Lord will do what he says. They will be strong like trees planted near a stream that send out roots into the water. They have nothing to fear when the days get hot. Their leaves are always green. They never worry, even in a year that has no rain. They always produce fruit. May I bring to your attention today that where you're planted matters. Where you're planted matters. And here's why. Because it shows what you trust. Where you are planted matters. Because it shows where, who, what, why you place your trust there. It is a demonstration of trust. More than anything you say, because a lot of people will say things, especially spiritually. Oh, I trust God. Do you? Oh, yeah, yeah, man, I put my full trust in God. You mean for today? Because a lot of people like to trust God with their eternity because that seems convenient. But they do not trust God with their today because that seems um, inconvenient, possibly even demanding. So they'll say, I trust God. But when you pull back and look, not at what they say, but at the demonstration, do they trust God? Because really, you can test these things. In fact, the word of God coming through the prophet Jeremiah in verse 5 actually begins this. He, he, he gives almost two, two realities that maybe some of you even chimed in, felt in your heart, a hearty amen to. He said, bad things will happen to those who put their trust in people. And you're probably like, yes, that's right. Can I ask you a question? And can you write this down in your notes today? Do you trust in people or do you trust in God? Come on. Do you trust in people or do you trust in God? Now, I know what you say. Come on, you're at church online. I know what you say. Come on, you're watching this on YouTube on a Tuesday because you want to get God's word in. I know what you say. But let's take a look at where you're planted. Are, are your choices prioritized through or are they prayed through? When you have a decision to make, do you make your decision based on the priority list that you make? You do your pros and cons. Now hear me out. Ain't nothing wrong with doing pros and cons. But is that the sole definer for you of what the right choice is? Do you prioritize through them or do you pray through them? Because sometimes if you pray through those choices, the Spirit of God might lead you to do something that from a prioritization perspective may not make a whole lot of sense. But yet there's something in your soul that knows this is the right thing to do. That, friend, is a demonstration as to whether or not you trust in people or you trust in God. Can I ask you, does what they think matter more to you than what God thinks? Because you say, oh, no, 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 what God thinks matters most. Really? Because a lot of us, our lives are led, controlled almost, by people outside of us and their opinions of us. Come on, what the boss will think. What my parents might say. Come on, what, what the neighbors will think. What the people that we try to keep up with. Come on, what my Instagram following will think. Come on, if we can't show. Are you... Does what they think matters most or does what God want matters most? Is validation from folk you know more important than what the God you say you serve wants from you? Do you trust in people or do you trust in God? Bad things, Jeremiah said, 
will happen to those who put their trust in people. Then he goes on. We just read it. He said bad things will happen to those who depend on human strength, which brings us to another question. Write this down. Do you trust your strength or do you trust God's strength? Come on. Do you trust your strength or do you trust God's strength? Because here's what you say. You say, of course I trust God's strength. Come on, he, 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 I was just singing some songs to God. Come on, I'm just singing how he's my provider. He's so you say, but let's look. Is prayer your first response or is it your last resort? Because for many of us, oh, we prayed, but we prayed after we had done everything we could. We had prayed after we had talked to everybody who had talked to us, after we had FaceTimed people. Come on, after we had talked to everybody we had seen, after we had had conversations with the family and the friends, after we, we talked to everybody, and then we were like, I, just, uh, I guess I'll ask God. Is prayer your first response, or is it your last resort? Do you, do you give like you believe God is your provider? Or do you worry like you believe you are your provider? Mm -hmm. Come on, do you give like you truly believe that God is the source? That God is the one who has given you everything that you have? And so it is your reasonable act of worship to return to him what he asked. Or do you worry because you think you're your provider. It was your smarts. It was your connections. It was your work ethic. It was your overtime. If your strength or your security is weakened, do you doubt that God is even concerned about you? These are binary questions, I understand. Do I pick this one or do I pick that one? Well, that's because these are all pretty clear examples of do you trust your strength or do you trust God's strength? Do you, do you trust in people or do you trust in God? Because for many of us, if you would be honest, and all I'm asking you to do is to be honest right now between you and God. Not to be honest with the chat. <laughs> not to be honest with people you may be sitting with. Not to be honest with people sitting at the kitchen table watching this with you. To be honest with yourself and with God. A lot of us say we trust. But we don't do like we say. And trust is not communicated. It's demonstrated. Can I tell you what it is you believe is stronger there has determined where you're planted. Let me be real honest. I'm going to build you back up, okay? <laughs> I'm going to build you back up. But the reason that you trust in your ability to provide for you, for your family, and you won't trust God financially is because truly, you believe you're your provider. The reason that you don't pray about those decisions first and foremost is because at the end of the day, you think other people's wisdom is more valuable than the wisdom of God. You think that what somebody else has to say, you think the pros outweighing the cons is more important than what God would have you to do. And may I just remind you, of the word of Jeremiah the prophet, speaking the word of God. Bad things will happen to those who put their trust in people. Some of you would say you trust in God, but truly you trust in people. Bad things will happen to those who depend on human strength. Why do bad things come to them? Here's what he said. That is because they have stopped trusting the Lord. If you would be honest, today, 
There are areas of your life that you say you trust God in. But the demonstration isn't there. And what that means is that you actually believe that something or someone who is not God is actually stronger, is better at providing. You trust that or them more there than you trust God. But if you're going to keep the change, what has to begin to happen today is that you have to begin to decide. Somebody type that word in the chat. Decide in advance. I'm going to decide in advance. You know what you need some of in your life? This is what you need. You need some. This is what we do here. You need some of those in your life. You need some of those. This is what I do here. In these situations, in these circumstances, with these priorities, in these endeavors, this is what I do. I love the boldness of the Old Testament leader by the name of Joshua. Joshua makes this statement that's recorded two times in the Old Testament. He declares this. He says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He didn't say even what they was about to do. He just said, look, I have made a decision for us. This is what we do. And some of you need to start making some, this is what we do. This is what I do about you. That for us, we go to church. Oh, that's what we do. We, in my house, we go to church. We don't wake up on Sundays and see how we feel. We go to church. <laughs> we will even plan our Saturday nights so that we, way we can prioritize being in God's house on Sundays. We go to church. That is what we do. We don't wake up and figure out how we feel. We don't wake up and see what the weather's going to do. We have decided, somebody help me, in advance. You know what we do? We serve diligently. Oh, come on. If there's an opportunity to roll up our sleeves and serve our city, serve our neighborhood, serve our community, serve somebody in need, we serve diligently. We don't wait to see how we feel. We don't wait to wonder whether or not all the people that we wanted to be there are going to be there. We decide in advance to serve. Come on, we hear about groceries being given away. We go ahead and clear the morning. It's not too early. Come on, it's not going to be too tiring. We decide in advance to serve. You know what we do? We give generously. That's what we do. We, we, we order our lives so that we can give generously. We do that as a church. We do that in my family. Some of you need to make that declaration that that's what we do. You know, I've gotten to the point where I don't tell people what we don't do. I tell people that we give generously. That's why we may not do that. <laughs> it's not just we don't do that. We, no, we, we don't give generously. And because we give generously, yeah, we, we, that just isn't a priority. Because we decided in advance. We pray fervently. That's what we do. Some of you need to start setting. So this is what we do for your own life, for your own family, for your own self. You need some, you need some for me's, for me, for me. For me, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to love big. Come on, some of you need to make that a declaration. about. I have decided in advance to love people in a big way. I have decided in advance to forgive people quickly. I will not walk around with bitterness gnawing on the inside of me. I will not allow somebody stabbing me in the back to turn into everybody must have a knife being ready to stab me in the back. I ain't going to live my life like that. I've decided to forgive quickly. I've decided to work hard because the scripture says, whatever you do, work at it as though you were working for the Lord, not for me. So I'm going to work hard, but you know what I'm going to do too? I'm going to enjoy life. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy the people God brings into my life. I've decided in advance. I'm not looking for better friends. I'm going to love the friends that I have now. I've decided in advance. It changes the way you live your life. I've decided in advance, can I tell you for me, that God comes first. I've decided in advance that his word is going to guide my life. That what he says, that's my standard. I'm not trying to get 
His word to match my thinking. I'm trying to get my thinking to match his word. His word guides my life. That his house is priority. The house of God, the people of God, they are priority in my life. That his people created in his image, all people matter to me, regardless of how I feel. Because some of you, you like those. The problem is you wait till the moment to decide how you will respond. Because it's all based on how you feel. Baby, you need to get this on the inside of you. Do not live your life based on how you feel. Live it based on what you know is true. What you know is true. Decide in advance. It is a weapon in this life. It is a weapon to fight discouragement and defeat. It is a weapon to do difficult things when you decide in advance. And if you are going to keep the change, hear me out today. Spiritually, you have to decide in advance. You have to plant yourself in the right place. I don't mean that geographically. I mean that pragmatically. I mean that with priorities in your, you have to plant yourself where you need to be. You have to decide in advance to trust God. And today, I want to give you five very simple, very practical ways for you to trust God in advance. All five of these take trust in advance. Some of you will hear some of these and not see how they take trust because maybe that's not an area for you where you have to trust anymore. That's OK. Other people, it is an area for them to trust. But I guarantee you, if you if you allow this list to pour over your spirit right now, the Holy Spirit will speak to you and say, that's you. That's you. You don't trust me there. You don't trust God. You don't. Not there. You have to decide in advance to trust God. Number one, write this down. Trust God by gathering. Trust God by gathering. The writer in Hebrews says, Do not neglect the gathering together of yourselves, as some have gotten in the habit of doing. But gather all the more as you see the day of our Lord approaching. Do not neglect it. Trust God by gathering. When we read about the early church starting in the book of Acts, you know what we find them doing all the time, over and over and over again? They gather. They gathered to hear teaching. They gathered to worship. They gathered to talk. They gathered to eat. They gathered to serve together. They got together. They kept on gathering. They kept on gathering. But so many people have neglected and lowered the priority of gathering. Can I tell you, whether you gather online or you gather in person, decide in advance to trust God by gathering. You say, what, is, what kind of trust is it? Here's why. Because this ensures that you'll never become isolated. Some of you have isolated yourself because you don't trust God enough to gather. Believing that he will bring the encouragement that you need, the strength you need in the moment that you need, the friend you need, the support you need, the word that you need in the moment because you have neglected to gather. You need to decide in advance. I'm gonna, I'm gonna gather. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be in service. I'm gonna be there online. I'm gonna be there in person. I'm gonna find me a group. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get myself around people of faith because my faith needs to build. And I don't need to be isolated because when you're isolated, all kind of crazy stuff runs through your mind. When you're isolated, you start thinking God doesn't love you, nobody loves you. You start running around with all these crazy little thoughts. Can I tell you, all the people that you worry about them because of what you read on Facebook that they be saying all the time and what you read on the Twitters that they be saying all the time, can I tell you something that's probably true? About 90% of them, they are very isolated. And they lose touch people. They lose touch with God. Some of you need to decide in advance you're going to trust God by gathering. That you're going to trust God. Write this down. It's number two. 
trust God by inviting. You know, the heart of our God is an inviter. Some of the last words that Jesus gave to us before he left this planet is he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit and teach these disciples everything I've commanded you. One of Jesus' most powerful stories that he told over and over and over again, he compelled people who were us to go into the highways and the hedges and to make them come in. But inviting can feel tricky for us because we wonder how they'll receive us. We start wondering, well, if I invite them, you know, I used to not be a person of faith and now I, now I kind of am. But if I invite them, are they going to think about me, what they think about all religious people, what they think about all Christians, what they think about all Jesus followers? Because I'm not, I'm not like that. And I wonder, and you have to place some trust there. And what this ensures is that you'll never forget people who are far from God. Sometimes people of faith can get so insulated with other people of faith that you've neglected the fact that there are people in your world, people that you talk to, people that you see, people that you live on the same street as who are far from God. Some of you need to decide in advance to trust God by inviting. They say, I'm going to be an inviter. I'm going to be someone who invites people into God's house. I'm going to be somebody who invites people into the community of faith, that invites people into my life. I'm not going to, I'm not going to neglect that, but I'm going to decide, and I'm not going to allow my excuses. I'm going to decide in advance because I never want to lose God's heart for people who are far from him. Here's the third one. You need to decide in advance to trust God by serving, by serving. Jesus himself said that the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. That was how he demonstrated it. But the reality is a lot of people who say that they're people of faith are more concerned about how they are going to be served than how they can serve. You need to decide in advance to serve. Serve in the church. To serve with us as the church as we provide meals to people. Come on, as we bless our block, as we serve how we do, to serve during the week, to serve on a Sunday, to serve somehow. Decide in advance. Don't wait till the Saturday morning and decide whether or not you feel like going, because you're never going to feel like it. I don't. But I decide in advance what matters. This ensures you'll never live your life just for yourself. So many of us are so consumed and so absorbed with ourself. And if you'll live a life where you serve other people, bless them in the name of God, you'll never get consumed with you. But you have to decide that in advance because serving is never convenient. But if you decide in advance to trust God with whatever those fears may be, God, that's my only day off. To trust God with the fact, God, you know I need some rest. To trust God with, I don't even like people like that. To trust God with it and see what he can do. But you have to decide it in advance. To trust God by, here's number four, write it down. By giving. By giving. You have to decide in advance to trust God by giving. Because here's what's true all through scripture. From Genesis to Revelation. Giving has always been a demonstration of worship that God requires. But here's what's true about it all the way through. God only wants to come first. He is not okay with getting your leftovers. That's what most of us like to give God. He is not okay with just being tipped on the back end. In fact, the book of Malachi very famously talks about the tithe. And the way the writer puts it is to bring the tithe into the storehouse. To bring it. Like to literally return it to God first. 
Think about the book of Genesis, Cain and Abel. Why was Abel's offering received and Cain's wasn't? Because Abel brought God his first and his best. Cain brought God his leftovers. It's about trust. And if I could be so bold and crass, let me tell you what's true for you as an American. As a first world living kind of person. If you don't trust God with your money, I don't know if you actually trust God. But I say, you trust God with your eternity, but maybe not your today. But if you trust God by giving, this is what it ensures. You'll never put your faith in your own ability to provide. See, that's why at the beginning of every month in my family, we give. We, we don't wait to figure out what bills are going to come in that we don't necessarily know we weren't prepared for, who's going to get sick, what car going to need healing. We don't wait for that. You know what we do? We decide in advance. God comes first. And so we give. We decide in advance to trust God by prioritizing. That's number five by prioritizing. What does that mean? I mean to put first, to put in priority, whatever God says matters. This ensures you'll never devalue what God says to value. Now I want you to understand what these are. One, two, three, four, five. These are not suggestions. Hear me out. These are scoops. What? Let me show you. These are not suggestions. They're scoops. Whenever I have planted things, I get excited about the idea of them getting planted, but there's one part of it that is um, sort of tends to trip me up. And that's digging the hole for whatever it is I'm gonna plant. A couple years ago, uh, actually it was several years ago now, my wife and I lived in a, in a in a different house and in our backyard it was just bare. It was just flat. It was just grass. There was no shade, no nothing. So we got the idea we were going to plant some trees. And then we started looking at the price of big trees and we were like, why don't we just start them small? <laughs> so, so we went to the Lowe's and got two little trees. Like I was taller than both the trees that we were planting, right? And I picked the day and I decided to plant both of them in our backyard. One was going to be over here, one was going to be over there, and we could see it happening. Problem is, the first thing we had to do was we had to go dig the hole. You ever tried to dig a hole to plant a tree, even if it's only this tall? Because my goodness, that ground is hard. And I was working it and working it and working it and scoop after scoop after scoop and I got the first one in and I got it settled and it looked good and everything was good but can I tell you something I was tired the problem is I'm that guy that like if I said I'm gonna do this I'm just gonna get it done and so I go over to number two and I start working and I start digging and I start digging and I, and I feel like I've dug enough and so I kind of stick the tree in there and pat the dirt around it kind of get it get it and it is fine but what began to transpire in my backyard over the course of days, weeks, months going forward would be a tale of two trees. <laughs> One tree was well planted. Why? Because we dug and planted it right. The other tree Every time a little wind would come by, it was, <laughs> every time it would rain, the tree would be, it was right up against the fence kind of too. And it would just be leaning on the fence. And I'd be like, oh, I gotta go straighten this thing up. One tree sat there and it began to, the wind blew, it was fine. It was hot out, ain't nobody watering, it was fine. The other tree had, had cords connected to it because we never wanted to replant it. We connected cords to it. Come on, we would prop it up, put extra soil around it. It struggled. It's how we, when we sold that house and moved away, that tree was still struggling. It was like, don't mind that tree. This was good though. Why? Because of how it was planted. 
because of how deep we were willing to dig. These decisions I've given you, they're not suggestions. Hear me. They're scoops. So how deep do you want to be planted? Let me ask it another way. How badly do you want to keep the change? Because some of you have been saying, some of you have been watching, some of you have been tuning in, some of you have been sharing this, some of you have been praying, God, I want to keep the change. How bad? Because I am giving you a weapon. I am putting a tool in your hand if you'll use it. Maybe the right question to ask, though, would be how badly do you want to be prepared for what life has coming? See, I don't know what the next six months hold for you. I don't know what the next six months hold for me. They may be great. They may be prosperous. They may be difficult. They may, they may be difficult relationally. They may be difficult emotionally. They may be difficult physically. I don't want this for you, for me, for anybody. But somebody you love may find themselves in a hospital, like holding on for dear life. You may find yourself moving from a place of stability financially to instability financially. I don't know. You may find yourself from a place of soundness and strength emotionally to a place of being frazzled. I don't know. But you know what I do know? Is that if you're planted right, if you're planted in the right place, come on, if you're planted down deep, then it does not matter what happens around you if you're planted right. What did Jeremiah say about the tree? He said, those who trust in the Lord will be blessed. They know the Lord will do what he says. They will be strong like trees planted near a stream. To send out their roots into the water. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to help you get planted today. To get planted in a fertile ground. To get planted in a place where you can get nourishment. Why? Because then no matter what happens, listen to what Jeremiah says. He said they have nothing to fear when the days get hot. Their leaves are always green. They never worry even in a year that has no rain. They always produce fruit. The line in this text that sticks out at me so much about this tree is that a tree properly planted, Jeremiah says they never worry. So many people, maybe even you, what dominates your thinking right now is worry. The reason you don't trust God by inviting, by gathering, by serving, by giving, by prioritizing. It's because you're worried. That worry bleeds over into your actions, your emotions, every aspect of your life. And you've tried to blame it all on what's going on around you and what's happening in the world. And it was this and it was that and it was them and it was there. No! It's not about what's going on. It's about where you're planted. And if you want to keep the change, you have to get planted in the right place. You have to get planted in the right things. You have to decide in advance that we will be there. We will do this. I am committing there. I wonder today where you need to decide in advance to trust God. I gave you five areas. And like I told you going into it, I bet the Holy Spirit spoke to you with one of them. Some of you need to decide today that you're going to gather no matter what. You have neglected gathering, but you know you need people in your life to strengthen you, to encourage. Isolation is starting to overtake you, and you need to decide to gather. Some of you, you need to decide to start inviting. 
You've been so worried about what they think, so worried about whether or not they'd still be your friend, but you know they need God. Come on, you know that they need what you found in him, and you need to decide to invite. Before you know how it's going to turn out, I decide to, uh, some of you need to decide in advance to start serving. You need to start serving on a Sunday. You need to start serving during the week. You need to serve with the team online. You need to serve with the outreach. You need to decide in advance, regardless of how you feel. Regardless of what, I decide to do this. Some of you need to begin to decide to start giving. Come on, you don't trust God with your finances. Oh, you'll give God a little something every once in a while if you got some leftover. Some of you have no idea if you, you, you think you set up giving, maybe once, maybe the idea, but you've like excused your way into knowing that you are trusting God by giving. Some of you need to decide in advance and say, as for me and my house, we're going to give. We're going to put God first. As for, I'm going to decide in advance. Some of you need to say to prioritize what God says matters. I'm going to quit being mad at God because his word doesn't line up with what I think. And I'm going to start being bad at my mind. I'm going to prioritize the things that God says matters. I'm going to prioritize my life around what he says. Not what I want, not what I, but what he says. Because I want to keep the change. And if you want to keep the change, today is your day. Let's decide in advance. Come on, can I pray for you? Heavenly Father, you see us right where we are right now. I pray for every person watching, every person listening, every person tuned in. Father, that today, today would be a day that they draw a line in the sand. Today would be a day of decision for them, where they decide in advance, before they get to next month, before they get to next week, before the opportunity even, they have decided today, this is what we do. This is who I am. This is how I'm going to handle it. And they will trust you there. They will trust you there. That place that they've never trusted you before. They will trust you there. That place that's always been scary for them to trust. They will trust you there. And Father, as they do it, my prayer for them is that they will see the fruit. They will see the change that they've always wanted to keep be kept because they decided to trust you. Father, I love you. I thank you. I pray all this in your precious name. Amen.